my dad would have liked to have done more shows and maybe even done some new re record or something. Just quickly touching on Cream and and uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as well. I mean, it was um, one of the early bands to be inducted, which does show their their importance to 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 rock and and everything that music became. I mean, what do you remember of of that night and that that whole ceremony? Oh, 1993. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, well, I was in LA in a band, um, so my dad invited me to come down. Um, I mostly remember sitting next to Naomi Campbell all night. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that's pretty much kind of trying not. I remember I was sitting here and she was sitting next to me and Eric was sitting next to her and Ginger was here. My dad was here, something like that. And so I was literally sitting next to Naomi in 1993, you know, and I'm like trying not who's Eric's date. Sorry, Eric, if you ever hear this, but you that's true. And she was stunning. You know, she still is stunning. So um, so that's kind of all I remember, really. No, I'm kidding. I remember uh, ZZ Top gave actually gave them the award on stage. Uh, so they came and said hello afterwards at our table. So I got to hang out with those guys a little bit. They were lovely. Um, George Clinton was there. Uh, so I got to meet him. Uh, Lenny Kravitz. There were just tons of different people there. It was one of those kind of crazy nights where you meet all these people and you go, wow, you're shorter than I imagined. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Wait a minute, you just look so huge on the screen, man. <laughs> and then you're like, but you're only four foot eleven. Okay. All right. Noted, duly noted. So uh yeah, it was kind of one of those crazy things where you uh you just sort of soak it all in. Um it was really wonderful. And they played a couple of songs. So that I think that was the first time the three of them had played together since the band had um finished. Um, I believe that was the only time. I mean, I think my dad and Eric had done some stuff and um, Ginger and Eric, I would imagine, have done plenty. Well, obviously in bands, subsequent to <laughs> but Blind Faith, etc. But um, yeah, they played. It was amazing. Um, and I was really proud of my dad. Uh, and I've, I kind of stayed in touch with the guys at the Rock Hall of Fame. So I go whenever I'm in Cleveland, I'll go oh, and good. sort of uh, have a little wander around if I'm doing a, a gig there or something or on a day off. Um, so I'm just, yeah, I'm really proud of, um, you know, th whenever my dad kind of gets that recognition, I think it's really important in terms of the history. Um, although when you go to the Rock Hall of Fame and you see the plaque with my dad, Eric and Ginger's signatures, Eric's got two signatures <laughs> because he's been in inducted twice <laughs> or maybe even three times. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. It might even be three times right now. I don't know. Certainly as a solo artist and Yardbirds. Yeah. Maybe Yardbirds as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he might even get inducted like by the end of it four or five times. I mean, there's plenty of other bands that he was in. Go on. John, John Mayle. Has he yeah. been inducted oh, yet? No idea. Lose he track. Be. Lose track. But what was your dad's feeling around that then? Obviously, because like you said, it was a long time since the three of them have played together and they are a, a monumental band. And it was something that everyone was so looking forward to seeing the three of them on stage again, playing these songs that everyone loved. So can you remember what your dad's thoughts, thoughts and feelings were in the lead up to that? Yeah, I mean, look, my dad was a complicated person, uh, as, I, as I've already mentioned. Um, and I think it's hard for us to understand. I mean, we're all, us musicians are always like, we want to be famous, but it's not necessarily about being famous. It's more like making a good living and being able to continue our creative work. And I think that, you know, if I was 22 years old or 23 years old and I became the most famous, even if it was just for that short amount of time, Cream became the most famous band in the world for that short amount of time, which propelled Eric to this stellar career and to all three of them. But um, but obviously Eric played the commercial game in a way that my dad didn't. You know, my dad was a more kind of explorative musician that went, you know, went into the jazz world and all kinds of different things. And he wasn't writing. He didn't get the producer that would kind of guide him to write pop songs and and kind of have that sort of career. Maybe that's a, maybe that was natural anyway. He wasn't really built for that, whereas Eric was built for that. Who knows? Um but there, but there was always a little part of my dad that wanted to be the pop star, the rock star, you know. So even when he was doing, you know, much more kind of creative type work, that in the back of his mind, he always wanted that. And I think 
he always wanted the cream to kind of come back together because because why not you know that he knew that they would always get the level of attention that um is that kind of top tier level of attention and um and i think that eric resisted it um because i don't think he wanted to do that really and then i think because my dad um he he got liver cancer and so he had a transplant and he almost died uh we were all kind of standing around him in the hospital that with the, with the doctor saying he's not going to come back from this and then he did miraculously turn it around um and i think because of that it sort of stirred something in eric i would imagine that like if we go if this is going to happen maybe we should do it sooner rather than later because we people are starting to get to that point in their lives where they might not live for that much longer my dad did live for 11 years after his transplant which is pretty amazing um as these things go but i think and you know, my my stepmom margaret probably had a lot to do with that just kind of approaching eric and saying hey look you know maybe if we're going to do this we should do it sort of kind of now um and I, that seemed to be what happened uh to make the cream reunion happen in 2004 2005 so you know it's um so there you go so yeah i think uh my dad always wanted to be the rock star but he also wanted to be stravinsky and he also wanted to be a uh, Thelonious monk and he also wanted to be charlie mingus so there you go. <laughs> it's a quite, kind of a com complicated uh you know variable strands of uh creativity to sort of pull together uh, and I'm fortunately, I've or fortunately, I've inherited a similar complex complexity in my head. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I know we're, we're, we're touching on your dad again. I'm sorry, you probably get sick of, of talking about things like this, but almost those those reunion shows was 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 that almost like closure for him? Then, in a way, that was that was like he, he'd done that. He'd, he'd probably thought for years it'd be nice to do it again. Finally, got to do it again, and then he thought that would that 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 is closure for the for the band and for him. I think it gave him a, a, an immense sense of satisfaction to do it, but I don't. I, but I think if they could have carried on doing it, they were getting offers apparently okay. um, after the after the Albert Hall in London and then the Garden in New York. You know, after those shows, they were getting some big offers, I believe, like Tokyo. You can imagine, and, yeah, and LA and whatever. But I was there on the last night at Madison Square Garden, and Ginger and my dad had somehow managed to fall out. <laughs> So, and I think at that point, Eric probably went, ah, you know, moving on. Um, so I, you know, I, I think my dad, if it had been possible, I think my dad would have liked to have done more shows and maybe even done some new re record or something because they was, they had something magical between the three of them. And, and that it, even though they were many years later getting back together, that there was and and they were different people you know they weren't these kids uh you know taking dr getting stoned and jamming out and all of that kind of stuff that people were doing in the mid 60s but they were at different stages of their lives but the the magic was still there the creativity was still there and um and you could and that was evident from the the moment they stepped out on stage together at, at the Albert Hall that first show that they did it was we were all you know it's this sort of silence and this kind of sacred moment the cream have got back together and it was it was it was beautiful and they sounded amazing so i think just from that pure authentic perspective i think my dad would have liked to have done more but it just didn't work out because of uh you know whatever was going on between my dad and Ginger. i don't know i don't understand it <laughs> For God's sake, they're offering you twelve hundred and sixty-four million dollars a second. Can't you just hug each other? I don't know. I mean, maybe one day somebody will know why. But I think it's just sibling stuff. You know, it, I think they were just so close, and they had this. And I, you know, I have a friendship with Ginger's son Kofi, uh, Kofi Baker, who I've mentioned, and he's an amazing drummer himself. But we've also had ups and downs in our relationship so maybe it's a baker bruce genetic uh spiritual yes. you know going through the successive incarnations from throughout beyond time and space yes. 
Yes, indeed. <laughs> I quite like the idea you said the, the sibling thing, because that probably does that's that sums it up perfectly, doesn't it? <laughs>